Hello, hello, hello. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? Good, good. Oh, we're about to have some fun. Is, is it okay if I record this? Yeah, and no, I think it already started recording, yeah. So I, I like to do, uh, we have this section on our site called one-on-ones where uh, it's interviews with people that are awesome. And so if this may, depending on what we talk about, if we get, to, if we talk about private stuff, then I, I won't do it. But if it just stays not private, then I might post it. If that okay. Happens. Sounds good. Okay. All right, man. Oh, goodness. Caleb, are you ready for this, man? You're about to get flooded with all the goodness, man. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, where do I start? Where do we start? So, uh, Caleb, can you start with telling, uh, telling David something you're passionate about? Yeah. I mean, so at Data Joe, my job is like operations manager and technical manager. And so I kind of oversee all the tech for our internal tech. Um, and then also like our processes and operations and stuff and kind of uses my sweet spot of removing friction for people. So I like helping people get back to what they're best at. And so that's getting rid of or automating away the drudgery and helping people get back to solving the problems people are good at solving. So that's kind of my, my sweet spot, what I like doing. All right. Yeah. So Caleb is, yeah, he's like my conscience. Like Caleb, I'm the big dreamer connector guy. And Caleb um, does an incredible job of helping set, turn big ideas into practical action so we can actually make progress. Um, so he's, he's very concrete that way. So uh, David, can you tell him a little bit about what you're passionate about? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'd say I love being able to help people figure out realize things they didn't know that they could do and um, figure out how to actually do it on their own over time and have successes that they didn't imagine that they could actually have. So I remember there was a, there's a woman who works with me this week and I said, Hey, I know, you know, very little about reader revenue, but I want you to build, I want you to go read these three stories and go build me eight slides on kind of like, how do you start with reader revenue? She came back today and she's like, I now know so much more than I ever thought I would know today. And what do you think? And it was great. So, um, so I love, I love seeing when that kind of stuff happens. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, and that's, that's, a, that's the heart of a teacher or a coach. I mean, there's something in there, right. Where you get satisfaction. Mm -hmm. I, I get that too. Satisfaction from seeing people uh, move forward or, 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 or have a, have a big win in their life. Something like, something like that. Yeah. Um, so I brought you guys together because, um, Caleb, I just, you, you need to know, David, I, I have a feeling that we'll be collaborating with David on, on some upcoming projects. Um, David, where he sits within the publishing community is he works, he's got, he's works with quite a few, uh, media companies. Um, when there's some overlap with us, like right now he's working with 360 West magazine, which is one of our clients. And so we, we've got some synergy there, but then other people that we don't work with in both the daily newspaper space, right? And then and then maybe trade and niche spaces. Uh, I might be speaking wrong, David, but you can correct me. Yeah, I know some trade, some um, niche within parenting, TV stations, yeah. Um, yeah, a little bit of all that. Yeah. Um, and so, but, but you said like, if I could sum up what you told me when we talked the last time, you want to be known, you're, one of your big dreams is to be known as that's the digital strategy guy, right? So for any of these media companies that are, they're all struggling with digital. Like, let's be honest, they're at least all the ones I'm aware of are struggling with digital and not just struggling in the sense of we're trying really hard and it's not working, struggling in the sense of even conceiving of what they look like as a digital organization, right? Struggling. Yeah. And, um, and so I think based on our conversation, David has answers for those people and he wants to be the guy that those people go to to, to create an actionable and effective and winning strategy for their digital business. Is it, did I say it right? I think I said it right. I think I said it right on. Yeah, good, good, good pitch. Yeah. All right. That's what, I'll pitch you all day, man. Oh, uh, so, uh, so I want Caleb to get to know you because again, like me knowing you is great because we can stay big picture and I'll start and I'm, I've already started, you know, as you know, I've already started making connections yeah, for you. So. Uh, no problem, dude. Like you're gonna love Molly at Phoenix. Molly's a monster, dude. She's 
character and she's practical. Like I, I remember when I was talking to her, I was first pitching Phoenix magazine and I started talking to her. I was like, oh, that's the lady that gets things done in the organization. You always find that person. Yeah. You never know what their title is going to be. It could be the CEO. It could be like the office manager. You never know. That's the lady that gets things done in Phoenix magazine. So um, we'll, we'll have a good time talking. But so I'm doing my thing, which is the relational thing and the vision thing and the dreaming thing and the and, and, and trying to put together um, high level strategy. Caleb needs to know you so he can help us figure out what practically we can be doing with you. And he'll 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 bring it into much more tangible. Actionable, practical terms from our side of the equation. OK, Um mm -hmm. So do you mind just that? So I, I think I asked you one thing I want you to do is explain to us the content strategy that you that that is so dear to you, right? Like the digital content strategy, because and treat us like we're like we know nothing about it, because, you know, I don't know a lot about the content side. Uh, neither of us really do. We accept our lists that we give to publishers. So if you could just tell us, like treat us like fifth graders and tell us what what that looks like for you, that would help. Yeah. So there's probably two areas to focus on. One would be like how to actually build more audience and then like through content. And the other one would be how to build revenue through content. So there's sort of like two different worlds, but they can interconnect. So let's start with the how to build rev, how to build audience through content. So, you know, media are doing like a lot of the same things they've always done. They cover government meetings, they cover crime, they cover sports, they cover community events. Those things are sort of like flatlined a little bit and just aren't like growing at the speed that they, I don't know if they were ever growing, but they are not like, they're, they're not audience drivers. And so I've been able to figure out over the years, what are the things either in those areas that can kind of create more eyeballs or how to sort of get distribution basically through creative approaches on those things. So for example, we know that real estate is like a no brainer to drive massive amounts of interest in, and, and eyeballs. So everything from fancy homes to what I can afford to explaining real estate trends, we sort of know this is like a, like a real, like a real, like a real thing. Um, we sort of know that food has the potential from lists to profiles, to recipes, to, um, to events to really sort of like be a, like a major, you know, major driver. We sort of know that like when content centers around like utility, so mm -hmm. it helps me actually do something. It just doesn't tell me something. It actually like it solves a problem for me or helps me in some way. Um, we know that content becomes much more um, appealing to people and gets much more shareability. So what we try to do is try to establish like where they're at, how we can bolt onto things that they're doing well. So for in sports, for example, we'll basically say, hey, great that you're covering games, but let's center something on after Friday night football games. Let's have something in the Sunday paper or Sunday on the web that kind of tells you the 10 stars of the week, the five things to look for that are coming up for the, you know, the games next week, um, break down each game into kind of like chunks and nuggets. Um, give me lots of photo pages and photo galleries. Like those are the things that people want. So it's a, it's a build off of like a traditional thing. And so those strategies really can, you know, work really well. And so we've had a lot of success with that. I think your guys' world best of is an area that we really have done really well. And so I just did a project for WRAL, their TV station in Raleigh, and they basically asked me to evaluate their best of categories look at the top 20 or 30 vote get vote gets in categories, look at some Facebook inside data and some Google analytics data and basically build a evergreen strategy for them that would have an anchor SEO approach. So the idea would be a category is like a top category is, um, are, is, is top tacos. And so in tacos and they have six cities in their coverage area, we would do best tacos in the triangle in North Carolina. And then we would do, and we would use the best of list to help guide some of that, but it wouldn't be everything because you lose readers when you just basically publish a best of list. But if you can yeah. integrate that with some other stuff, like you have a winner. So best tacos, then best tacos in Raleigh, best tacos in Chapel Hill, best tacos in what carry. And then underneath that, um, best food trucks for tacos and carry best food trucks. And basically, and then we write profiles basically of all those places. And so from a Google perspective, we're creating authority for that publisher in a massive way, and it's all kind of connected up. And so um, that has been a real, and then we did that strategy for them and they were like, Hey, 
can you write the first 50 articles? And we did. And now they kind of have like a way to not do it on their own because we showed them how to do it and kind of distribute it. So it's a good example of that. I would use education as another example. So we look for things that we know people are searching for. So we spend a lot of time in Google search trends, seeing like what are the searchable things around topics. And we've been able to identify that school calendars is a massively searched thing in a community. I have three kids. Um, and I'm always looking to find that damn calendar to figure out like when is there, when is there spring break or how long is there Thanksgiving break or whatever. I must search for that thing 50 times, a, 50 times a year. So we've gone into a, a client and we'll go create for each city uh, school calendar posts. You know, we have a client in Atlanta called Rough Draft. They own like a, a few weekly papers and a few monthlies. And we created a um, here is the school calendar for Atlanta public schools for 2023, 2024. And it's been the most, it had probably three paragraphs in it and the calendar. <laughs> and it's been their most popular story all year long. So it's kind of like a little bit to play in a journalist, like this kind of stuff drives that much audience, but it's yeah. what people are looking for. So like school boundaries and um, like school rankings and all those kind of things is what kind of, so we kind of figured out how to like create the the thing we know that people are kind of looking for digitally and we're able to drive like really big numbers and audiences for people in niches. So like in 360's case, we've been able to help them figure out some niches to really like create as like kind of key verticals. And I'm doing the same thing in St. Louis city magazine right now, where we took their verticals and we did a do and don't. So we kind of looked at dining first and we said, do more of this content based on survey results and some other things, but let's stop doing these things. We took those do's and we add them into their newsletter to kind of remake their newsletter. So this, these aren't just like stops, like, oh, go create the stories. Like we're trying to align them to like their products. And that has been really, really successful. So um, I don't know, hopefully that gives you a, a feel for on the audience growth side of what we're trying to do with, do with content. And are you doing that based on like SEO strategies, like trying to get organic inbound traffic? Or are you doing that based on kind of surveying the existing market, the existing readership and figuring out what do they want more of? Or is it kind of a both? Yeah, it's a mix. Of, yeah, it's a both. So Google search trends will tell us what the market wants, you know, what the market is looking for. Their own site will tell you, you know, what the readers sort of like. So I think it's a blend of those things. But we want to make sure that we're using all the tools out there. So we're very heavy into Facebook groups. What we'll do okay. is we'll sort of take that content. Then we'll go try to help build relationships with the admin in a Facebook group, get them to like us or get them to like the media company and then start using that as a distribution channel. Facebook is killing publishers with how they're not, you know, it's they're not favoring them anymore, their algorithm, but Facebook still loves groups. And so being able to get in groups is a great distribution method, like within, within an area that publishers are actually having a hard time with. Oh, dude, it's so beautiful, man. Okay, go ahead, Caleb. I got questions What after your questions. Oh, I think that's good. Yeah. So when you come to a publisher and you say more of X, do more of X and do less of Y, right? Is that kind of like something you can just do for, that sounds like that's probably a, a lot of heavy lift on your side. Is it, or is it, or is, is that kind of thing you can really just spin out and turn key to your heart's content? I'm trying to get a sense for what I can send your way. So Tell me about yeah, that. Yeah, we can turn it. I mean, now that we know, and, and like, it's not hard. Like we, and we can kind of figure out where a publisher is going to say yes or no to things. So if it's like a real traditional publisher, we'll work off of what they kind of currently have. So we'll work in sports, we'll work in education, just find the audience drivers for that. If they seem a little bit more open ended than new, I mean, a lot of this comes down to not the publisher, but the actual like newsroom um, yeah. based on how open they are. And that might help us kind of figure out where to kind of go with things. So that's kind of how we think about it. Okay. You just said how open they are. So I'm guessing that ideal situation for you is an open newsroom. A yeah. Newsroom. Wide open, open. Wants, to tr wants to throw some spaghetti against the wall. Like we want to try some things. Isn't afraid to fail. Like, but I'd say most of them are not like that. I'd say most of them are like, you know, somewhere in the middle. And so we just kind of feel our way, you know, go read the room and we just kind of feel our way through it. Right. You can work with them if they're, if they're a little bit stiff in the joints, right. You can work with them, but yeah. if you had your wish, if you're, you're a kid in the candy store where they're like, look, we're open. Tell us what you want. Tell us what you yeah. want to try. Yeah, we'll try. Um, yeah absolutely. And, and are you, and how often are you working with newsrooms? Is that, is that, primarily what you're doing all the time is working with newsrooms or are you working with sales? Like where? 
Yeah, I'd probably say 60% of the time it's in newsrooms. The other 40% is in, in sales and branded content. And so what we're doing here is we've built a program that allows us to go to somebody and say, here is, um, we can build a, let us review all your processes. Let's figure out, like, if you're doing branded content today, let's figure, let's look at your distribution. Let's look at your, um, let's look at your packages. Let's look at how you're creating content. Let's look at your processes. And then let's kind of put together a revision to that based on like how this could kind of be improved. Some cases that's easy to do. Some cases we have to work in system and takes a little bit longer period of time to do. But what it gets us to then is actually a, pit, a new, uh, like a revised pitch deck that we actually help kind of build for them. Then once that is done, and if they don't have any of that, then we just sort of say, here's how you should do it, you know? Um, and then we kind of go from there. And then the most impactful thing though, is then we, then we work with them. So they either can have us on a pitch call and they kind of like, Honestly, often these calls are like, hey, hey, Joe, like, uh, great to see you. I have a strategist here. He's going to tell you about our branded content program. And that's it. Bang. And I do the whole thing. And at the end, I'm like, hey, what do you think? Oh, I love it. or I hate it. And like, I'm kind of like doing the selling for them. Some cases like the ad rep will like for St. Louis, for example, they don't bring me on those calls. They bring me, though, when it gets to the point of either like needing somebody to explain what kind of stories we would do. So they give me on a call and be like, hey, Joe's going to explain like, his home built his home business, David, like pitch him some ideas, get him excited so I can close them or it might already be closed. And I'm coming in to kind of play the content strategist role to kind of get them going for the first few stories that we kind of might do. Once we do that, then we actually create the content form. So there's continuity with me and them. And, you know, then they kind of approve the story and then we kind of promote it and whole nine yards. Oftentimes I'm part of the process to actually show them the results at the end uh, like after the end of the month, we kind of have a call, we kind of go through what happened. Um, and so there's a really great connection there where I'm actually playing a much like in terms of who's most important to the client, it's me, it's not the rep and it's not the sales manager. At that point, the relationship really sort of kind of sits with me. And so um, that's really impactful and people are getting like real money for this stuff now. And so what we're trying to get rolled out at 360 West right now is that sort of you know, and so they're getting like social, they're getting newsletter, they're getting all those things. And so some cases, the publisher wants to handle all the fulfillment. We just turn the content over. Like how, that's how the St. Louis City Magazine does it. I think in 360 West, like we'll probably do everything. We'll handle all the fulfillment for them. And then they'll eventually sort of kind of like take it on themselves. But it just a, the reason that branded content, the reason this is a thing right now, and the reason people pay me is that you, hiring a freelancer can be a disaster because you are putting basically your advertising relationship in the hands of probably like a former journalist or a current journalist who's <laughs> going to get questions like, how should I say this? Like, that's not when a journalist is interviewing somebody like you don't like if somebody ever asked me a question as a journalist, I'd be like, I don't know, like just answer the damn question. Yeah. Um, like that, that's not how this has to go with an advertiser. And so having somebody who actually knows how to like, talk to an advertiser, warm them up, like do all those things. It's just a totally different skill set. So media companies have had these things like really fall apart in front of their face because they don't have the right people that are doing this. And they think they can pay 50 bucks to a, the same guy that's covering the game on Saturday night is now going to go like write like a branded content story for the Allstate agent down the street. And it's just not the same. It's just not the same thing, and especially then once the story is run and then you have to explain things like, is that a good audience number? What can you do to actually improve it? How do I get leads? Like that's just a different skill set. And you also don't want that to be a totally sales skill set. It has to feel like organic and authentic enough. And so it's a very unique um, like skill set to sort of have. And it's why people are, it's why this is hard for people. And so this is a huge opportunity for us to do more of this. Yeah, I, I, I think I get it because you're, it's really, that's like a sales function, to be honest. It's like, it's like, when you're talking to, if I'm talking to a, a a potential advertiser and saying, hey, let's generate some great content together, and the advertiser has no idea what they're doing, then then I then that is a sale. There's a sales interaction happening because I I'm I'm helping them generate what they're doing on the fly, right? Like I'm helping them understand what they're doing as opposed to telling having them tell me what to do. So I I'd, I'd imagine that's wildly different from being in being a, a journalist trying to get the truth out of somebody. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And so here's the opportunity, I think, in your guys' world in the in the list space. So I do work with Richner Communications. They own 25 weekly papers in Long Island. And, and um, they now are seeing more branded content coming off of leads from things like their lawyer event or their um, real estate event. Like that's where the leads are coming from. And they're people who want branded content. And so like, not just making this as like somebody who can sponsor, you know, whatever at the, you know, buy the table at the event or have the ad or the profile, but it's actually like now, like, so for example, a realtor who bought the first story was a profile on her. Second story was answering a question about, I'm afraid, or if you're afraid to sell your house, cause you think you can't get it into another house. Here's why you shouldn't be afraid of that in New York state. And yeah. the third story was five reasons you should love to, you should want to move your family to this sort of city where she's trying to become like, you know, the, the known realtor. So like the content is so clickable, like all those stories are discoverable and like so much better, honestly, than just a sponsorship and a best of, and she's seeing that. And so like to connect that idea with what you all do could be really like that. That's where the power and something like this could really kind of come in, I think. Here's the nut. So that's the nugget, right? Like, with everything that we set up to, is leading up to that as far as like practical action for us. Yeah. I, I, and I'm going to say it back to you a couple of different ways because I want to really soak in that. So um, we're talking about even the way that best that these awards are monetized. Currently, these awards are monetized by a rep going and saying, do you want a full page ad? Do you want an upgrade in the directory? Do you want to come to the event? Do you want a plaque? Right? Like those are, do you want a digital advertising campaign? You know, which is probably newsletter or run a site, something like that. And what you're, what you're saying is there's a better way, <laughs> right? There's a better way to empower the advertiser to get their name out into the world with context around themselves as a thought leader. You're building, because all the things you described with the realtor, you're building that person up as a thought leader. You're building them up as the go-to person in this topic, in this region. And the way you do that is through content and people will pay good money to, to have that capacity to create that content, even if they're not good writers and don't know what to do or don't know what keywords to use or that kind of stuff. Um, so that does kind of, so, so with the directory, it's an offering on top of the offerings that are currently being presented to the market. Right. It's, yeah. it's so right. So, so it actually is, a, it is a play that, goes a bit above our pay grade because the publisher has to see the value and sign off on it is, is the bottom line, right? The public, and, and what you're saying is, okay, but watch what happens, I, right? Like you've been on the calls. You, you've been on the calls. You've been able to show people, here are the metrics to show you why this was worth the money. And those metrics are far stronger than what they would get from how many times people saw their ad. Yeah, what I tell people, yes, what I tell people is people like reading about people. And, and that's true. And people like reading, people don't like being told and people don't just like ads about people, you know, and so pe people can be the lawyer, people can be somebody that the lawyer actually helped like win a case for people can be a community organization that the lawyer's involved in that he's actually giving he or she's giving money to that's about people and when you write about that the value for the advertiser is so much great and we have to be careful with this with like who i work with because we can't devalue selling ads <laughs> that kind of thing so it has to be kind of part of that story and work together but it's there and when people start seeing it it, it just explodes so um, when people get it they're like so it's interesting. We um so in Long Island, we have this realtor and we have in the same town, we actually have an insurance agent. And through this content, not even through us, but through them, they now have connected and built basically a lead gen with each other. Like it's incredibly oh, like so sick. 
Dude, yeah, that's it's, so it's crazy. Great. It's insane. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but like they but but they're like minded now. They know they both are trying to do the same thing. They can see that they're trying to take the same sort of business approach and they're totally aligned now. So it's a really good, it's a really good fit. So that's amazing. I mean, that's amazingly fun. So so here's the here is the challenge. So I, I think I think assuming things move forward with 360 West, right? And they and, and then you and I sync up on the strategy for the directory to make to make sure that it's profitable. Because in in this scenario, basically the, the directory just becomes an an elongated lead list, right? Because it's a it's a it's a platform in a place where we can do a basic highlight of of people, of different lawyers that you know, based on what specialty they're in, based on whether they want to pay the moderate fee for the upgrade, but then, but then really that's just the launching point for this other product, which is how many of these can we convert into people who see the value and are willing to pay, you know, I'm assuming you're talking about like a more of a monthly engagement fee as opposed to just an annual engagement fee. Is that fair? Like, are we talking about more frequency with this kind of a play? Yeah, I mean, what I, yeah, so usually what I do is we just come up with either a cost per article and then we bake basically all the things into that cost per article, like the attending the meetings with the advertiser, the pitching and all all, all that. And also it really depends on what all we're doing. We're we doing all the fulfillment or we just, you know, so some cases it's sort of like I create like an hourly rate and people can use me however they kind of, like it's how St. Louis does it. Like yeah. they don't have me write everything. They have me review freelance articles. Sometimes they have me pitch. So there's all sorts of ways, I think based on like where the publisher's at to, you know, kind of figure, kind of figure that piece of it out. But yeah, I think kind of the, the other thing that just made me think about real quickly would be what could we do with the list content that you all have that we could like say, we will build this all into different like category story, kind of the best of sort of stuff that is actually true editorial that would give, I mean, how we get people to that could be really huge. That could potentially be like another service that could get tacked on here. Best of so, like, narrative. Take the, yeah. Yeah. We take the doctor, we'd basically break the doctors into lots of segments or locations or whatever sizes. And we say, we can create, 10 articles for you from the doctor's list at this rate, but it's going to give, um, it's going to give all of these, you, you can up, you can charge more now for that package because they're now going to be featured in these articles. And like, there's way bigger SEO here via that. than there's going to be in just like having, having it out there. So that, that might be a thing to think about. Here's a magical golden nugget, right. That I think might, might be appropriate here. In our surveys, when we're like our surveys are direct communications with doctors, they're direct communications with lawyers. Like the doctor themselves are the ones accessing the form and nominating their peers. And we can ask them whatever we want, right? The, so, so consider that I can ask them yep. whatever I want. I can ask them about their interests. I can ask them about hot topics, right? And then that data could come in and become um, a seeding ground for content that we know will be relevant to doctors because the doctors yep. themselves are indicating to us. And, and, and some of that can be drop downs and things like that. So that they're saying areas of interest that can be aggregated. So, you know, choose out of this drop down list, what most interests you. And then we get 40 of one and 30 of another and five of another. Okay. Well, you're going to know, man, we should really kind of, you know, mess with this a little bit over here. You know, this one that got 40 people saying, they cared about that topic. So, right. so yeah. there's potential. Like if I hear you correctly, I think I'm trying to meet you there and saying, yeah, man, we could turn the every survey we do into a content factory to some degree, right? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. not a factory, but a con the content seed for content to grow out of that seed that's relevant right. to that community. Am I tracking yeah. with you? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a good way of saying it. Man, that's, do, um, do you work a lot with Second Street? Like, do you talk to Second Street about these kind of, because they, no, it feels like, I, why not? Do you know them? I mean, y'all know you, Matt, you know Matt Cohen, but he's not there anymore. So do you have relationships with? Yeah, not really anymore. I've kind of lost, I mean, I knew Julie, I think Julie is still there. Um, 
you know, I know, I know a few people that are still, yeah, I just, I just haven't made that connection, but I mean, it would obviously be probably advantageous too. So I don't know. So I, I'm actually, I don't, I don't have deep relationships with second street. Um, I, I like, I like Matt, but like Matt's not there. And so in terms of like, like I've reached out and tested the waters to see, you know, I, I, I'm that dude that's like going to poke, poke people and see what comes out. And the they were relatively indifferent to me <laughs> so uh, yeah. so no 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 anger but also i don't have a i don't have a huge inroad there they have a competitor yeah. named scene think you know them Mm-mm. um pretty much the same thing um a little bit different of an approach and they are super entrepreneurial and super open to partnership so okay. well- if I just was testing to see if you have some loyalty to Second Street or anything like that, that would. Yeah, I used to, but I don't. I don't really anymore. Yeah. Okay. Because I I would probably port you over to Scene Think to my guy Blair over there, um, and okay. uh, and see, because again, like just as well as you could pair your content strategy with us and with our products, you could pair your content strategy with Best of, for sure. Like you're already doing it. Like you're already doing that with the radio station you mentioned. Right. Yeah. Beautiful funnel of content out of the surface data of who the winners are. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so I think that's the that's that's the beauty. Um, Caleb, what you got? So it is a little bit over. I want to respect your time. If it's time to <laughs> cut, I think I've got time. I think, Johnny, you've got time too. I don't see anything on the calendar. Um, yeah, I can go another five or ten minutes. Okay. My brother, yeah. my brother's gonna be here at some point, but until he gets here, I can hang out. Okay. So me, me and my brother are about to get crazy. Yeah, I haven't seen him for a couple months, so we're about to go get get lunch together or something. Get a late late lunch, early dinner. Um, but uh, this this conversation really excites me, David. Like I. There's something here. It seems like there's a bit of a road, a road to hoe to get to where we mm-hmm. want to be. Um, off, but go back to you, Caleb. I, I don't want to. I want. I want you to take it for a minute, and then I'll. I'll take I it mean, I'm just thinking like low hanging fruit. How do we get publishers like starting to see the value of branded content? If we like sell a list, like let's say a top doctors list, and we say, hey, if you want to do branded content alongside this top doctors list, we know a guy who would be awesome to talk to. And if they're interested, like just making that connection that way, I feel like it seems like a low hanging fruit um, just to kind of get you in front of publishers and then also create a value add for, I mean, selfishly for our products, but also value add for the publisher that they can then, you know, create more revenue off the same product that they would have anyway. Um, So that's just one idea off the top of my head. I feel like that would be relatively low hanging fruit if you would do like a one-off branded content thing like that or if you prefer to go in with the full strategy and roll it out that way yeah you know i think like to begin with i think willing to sort of do whatever kind of makes sense so if it just basically gets them warm to the idea i mean i never think it's a good idea to do a single article because you need time i mean it has nothing to do with like us making monthly revenue for several months it probably has to do more with like you need some variety. They need to learn a little bit, like all those kind of things. But look, if the way to start it is to come up with some price point that is attractive enough to kind of get them in the door and they just sort of see what that's like. And even if we don't work through all the processes, um, I think that's okay just to kind of get going. I think, I think that would be totally, totally fine. So let me, let me ask you this question. Are you, do you want to be seen as the branded content guy or the digital strategy guy or are the, you see what I'm saying? Because it seems like branded content is a subset of digital strategy. So it is, it is. Yeah. I mean, we uh, really kind of, I think like branded content is part of digital strategy is sort of how we kind of like think about it. Yeah. And truly like, like as far as being the branded content guy, you're, you're, you're going to be alone. There's nobody like you, right? Like I, I know a lot of people, bro. And there's, there's nobody like you that's saying, I've had great success with branded content and I can show you and give you the playbook and then I can go do it for you. And then I'm going to show up on a call and help close the advertiser. And then I'm going to talk to the advertiser and justify the results. Nah, you, you lost like at any point in that funnel, you're the, you become the only guy. (laughs) Right. Which, which I think capitalize on that. Um, 
Now there are other digital strategy guys and, and gals out there, right? So it seems like your big differentiator is the branded content piece. If I'm reading you correctly. Well, I would say it's probably two things. It would definitely be that. I would say the content creation piece is the other like big part of it. So yes. um, there aren't a lot of digital strategy people who are also offering content as a service, like organic content. Like they're doing, like tell, that'll tell you, yeah, I'll go write those 50 best of articles for you. Or like, for example, one of my consultants, one of my con um, clients is the Albuquerque Journal in Albuquerque. I was there yesterday. And um, they're like, we're really struggling with digital audience. I'm like, because you guys aren't doing like these topics, right? I said, how about you give me a month and let me go hire somebody. Here's the fee. And let's sort of see what happens. And in a month, like they went crazy and they did great. And the content was great. And I said, the value here is I will oversee this for you. And we'll make sure that it's like on point. And it was, and, and they loved it. So I think like, nobody's really doing that, you know? And so I can really control the content that we're going to get out the door. So I think that's a pretty big differentiator. And then sort of like my experience in the industry, like one of the reasons people hire me is that like my experience in the Gannett type gatehouse world is, is, I mean, I was, I was head of news for gatehouse for nine years. And yeah. so I know, I know the, um, benchmarking better than anybody. Like I was going to ask, what should somebody produce? How are we more efficient? Like all those things like that. And what is the right tech stack for me? Like I did all those things for 500 newspapers at once. And so that's a significant like leverage point that I have and being able to tie all, and anybody can say I know tech stack, but like, do you really have you ever made a decision of what 500 newspapers are going to use for their content management system? Probably not. I have. And stressful as hell, oh my um, gosh. you know, but like, you know, so that's a big differentiator, I think, in terms of like what, what I'm able to do there. Yeah. All right. This is amazing. And I think what we've got is, I, I think it's publishable. I mean, I think I might just put this, if you don't mind, I'm probably gonna put this up to people. I'm going to stop recording yeah. so take a couple things offline now. So I'm um, stopping now.